but it was another defeat, the 14th Premier League defeat of the season on Saturday. Uh, a comfortable 3-0 win for Brentford. Glenn, I know the answer to this, but the same result was back in May. So that's got to be proof that we've not progressed at all since last May, surely. Um, well, yeah, I mean, it's two games, nine months apart. So you, you, you can't really sort of use that to sort of build up a big picture. But yeah, it's interesting that, you know, everyone knew the significance of the game last year in terms of the, the crowd sort of turning on Ralph. And we've gone there today. We uh, Sorry, yesterday we played a very good side. And it, it seemed to me like we were just about hanging in there in the in the first half for the you know for the first 40 minutes <laughs> two goals in a minute the, the game mm. the game is completely dead isn't it um and it, you know i thought it was there was one exceptional performance for us at the back for most of the game salasu i thought he was excellent he mm. prevented two certain goals in the first half prevented another one in the second half when it was already 2-0 i think um yeah he'll probably feel he maybe should have done better with um with ben mee's goal but that that was a hell of a header but the, I mean, the problem was we didn't stop the crosses coming in, and um, you know James Bree had a had a difficult introduction to the Premier League there because two crosses came from his wing and and one got floated over his head for the for the second goal. So uh, so yeah, it wasn't um, it, it wasn't great. Um, two 0 down at half time. Half made the changes, brought on the tall Paul and um, Sulemana, and it was a little bit better in the second half, but. Like the Newcastle away game, we're out. We're out of the game by then. Mm. So the other team are just sitting back a little bit and just seeing how the game plays out. Yeah, we had more possession and we had a, a couple of sort of half chances, but never ever expected us to um, to even get one goal, let alone get back into it by scoring a couple. So um, yeah, and the third goal was the with the icing on the cake, and it was the the normal thing, wasn't it? The cross cross into the mixer, and our guys are all stood. You know, one's not stopping the cross, and three are all stood there you know and there's a free guy to edit into the net so uh yeah it was a it was a disaster but knew it was going to be a disaster virtually as soon as we saw the b team line up the day before yeah stems back to that friday again jacob i know you picked up on the problem with the the crosses into the box they just don't seem to be learning no i think that Southampton don't do it either solve problems themselves I, I remember picking up on this when i was watching them during lockdown like how vocal ralph harsnittle was compared to the rest of the team there's no real vocal presence there's no leader in there and if, if there is a shout it's, it's there's no tactical advice in there. there's no one saying right you know for example jack steven saying right kyle just make sure you tuck in a bit closer to me because we keep getting done down the right side of the channel there was nothing none of that and i don't think there is any now Southampton, since especially under jones as well because you know he keeps saying that he wants to be solid, defensively sound, they conceded a lot of counter attacks, and I think it's because one, Slamton don't keep the ball well enough to actually organise themselves first, and two, they're just not positionally in a good position anyway. So there's no structure in the team, there's no organisation, and when things do start to go wrong, which they do in every Premier League game at the moment, they haven't scored first in any of them. There's no one to rectify them until half time. I think you saw that at Newcastle; mm. they were completely blown away in 25 minutes and an injury to Joe Linton called, allowed Jones to call him over and they changed back to, to a back four and actually got a, a little bit better it just feels like we see the problems in the first five minutes and that sets the tone you know crosses into the box overlaps you know how Brentford play they're probably how Southampton want to play eventually uh, but Southampton couldn't deal with it and the fact is Southampton because he did 10 goals from crosses now they get it's broken on a lot of times and they they seem to be going back to how Ralph was, which without the press as well. We're all starting to sound like broken records, aren't we, Steve? But it was it's just the same old story again, unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, Jacob did uh, put a graphic out on Twitter. Um, was it this morning or was it last night? Um, showing, showing all the first half crosses. Oh, and man. basically the two that were headed away from... I think there were two that were, that were prevented from getting into the area. And then there were two that were literally in the first two minutes from corners from either side mm. headed away by the first man. You thought, well, if they're putting corners across like that for the entire 90 minutes, that's fine. We can, we can deal with that and head those away till the cows come home. Um, but of course, Premier League players are better than that. And eventually they'll learn and they'll, they'll adjust. And the crosses did get better in, into the area. And we're just not good enough at stopping them. Um, and I mean, this is something I'm, oh God, I'm so bored of just discussing this because we bring it up every week we all are. That, that we, that like the years where we were good defensively under Pochettino, Kuman, and even Puel, when, when we were, we were, we were 
we weren't quite as attacking as we needed to be towards the end of his his year in charge. But certainly to start with, defensively, we were really solid. And that was because we didn't let the ball get into the area. If you don't let the ball get into the area, then at the end of the day, you're relying on the opposition are relying on taking a pot shot from 30 yards and pinging it into the top corner. At the end of the day, if, if someone if someone scores that way, you, you stick your hands up and give them, and yeah. give them a handshake and say, yeah, fair play to you. Um, but we've not... I mean, we pack our team with defensive midfielders and yet the defensive midfielders aren't doing the job of a defensive midfielder of helping out the defence. They give a little bit of protection to the centre-backs when the opposition are running at us. Um, But when the ball goes wide, they need to be shuffling across and giving the fullback help because clearly um, whoever's playing at fullback, and and to be honest, it doesn't really matter who it's been over, over the last three or four years. Whoever has been playing at fullback hasn't been good enough on their own um, to stop a winger or a combination of a winger and an opposing fullback from um, working working an angle and putting a cross into our box. And we can see so many, so not even just so many goals, but so many clear chances, so many chances that we get away with um, a lot of the time. But this season we're we're getting found out because we're we're giving away good quality chances and the opposition are just better at taking them um, than they have been previously. And it's just not good enough. And I mean, the fact that I'm sat here with I mean, my, my coaching qualification is basically the, the most entry level qualification you can get like the FA junior level one or whatever it is these days. I, I can't, can't even remember what it's called. That's how long ago I got it. Same as one of Nathan Jones's assistants then, isn't it? Quite possibly. Yeah. <laughs> But it's but the fact that even I can see this um, as a as a basic problem at a top level league, surely they surely they analyse this and spot that that crosses into the box are a problem. Actually, defending the cross itself by being able to win headers and stuff isn't the issue. It's letting the ball get into the box in the first place, and it's like, well, okay, you've got you've got. You want to play a zonal marking system. That that was basically what caused the goal, the first goal. Ben Mee's goal is because Mee has sprinted across the the, um, the defensive line. He's got the momentum from his run and is able to put power on his on his header and basically out muscle um, Salasu and I think I can't remember who else it was that jumped with him. Um, but basically, everybody ends up in a crumpled heap. Uh, Mee's the guy that that wins wins the header. And it's it's a great run. It's a great header. But if you're marking, if you're marking zonal, that's kind of the risk that you run. In that your defenders are static. You don't if you don't have a run at the ball, um, you can only ever be reactive. And I think in the situation where too many balls are coming into the box, you've got to be a little bit more, more proactive than that. And I think if you if you're allowing the ball to come into the box, we need to be marking man to man. Whereas that zonal marking system kind of works if you've got um, midfield help to prevent the ball coming into the box in the first place. Is it, Glenn, more to do with the inconsistencies in the lineup? You look at the most successful teams over years, they know they're going to play with a back four or they're going to play with a back five and they're going to have the same personnel week in, week out. We've got someone like Roman Perot that puts in a really good performance against Blackpool, scores a couple of goals, and then he's not on the team sheet. Then you've got um, the new lad, Bree, coming in um, at right back and, and struggling because he was chucked in at the deep end. That there's, there's no chance for them to build relationships no. there and get to know each other. And, and surely that's going to be a problem. Yeah, it is. I mean, you you know, to me, you 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 pick your best two central defenders. Hopefully, one's left-footed, one's right-footed, which we have the opportunity to do, if we so wish. And you you pick your best two natural fullbacks on each side, and you go with that, and you don't change it. You know, you you drill those players to to um, to play as a back four. Um, I mean, everyone can probably name the you know the the back four that Arsenal had in 1990 because mm-hmm. it was so good. You know, it's, it's it's that sort of thing. I mean. I, don't, I think we're going to go on to the Newcastle game. But if you, if you look at that Newcastle game, the manager has picked a back five for starters. It's five players who have never played together before. It includes a player who's never played higher than the championship in his first game at this level, away at Sir James's Park in the semi-final. It includes a player who's been on loan at Aston Villa and not started a game. And it includes a, a right back playing left back. And you wonder why it's a shambles. Mm. 
mm. you know, it, it's it's not rocket science. And and in that particular case, because a midfielder lost a runner, he kind of absolved himself from all blame for picking that back five and just said, oh, well, if we had lost a runner, it wouldn't have been a goal. That That's as maybe. But, you know, we had, we had five defenders all feeling their way into the game. And, um, you know, I, I've, I've been accused of being a bit, bit hard on James Bree. I don't think he covered himself in glory yesterday but he he was okay he, I thought he was it he was weird. horribly thrown into that game against Newcastle and you know on the on the back of probably two training sessions with teammates he'd never met before and he, he was thrown into that game and there was absolutely no need to do it bearing in mind Walker Peters and Perot were were available and you could have he could have picked a familiar back four or even a back five he, he could have done that but he didn't do it so in answer to your question, yeah, I think it's I think it's ridiculous to change the defence every single week and expect it to um, to be a well-oiled machine. It just isn't going to be.